to Old Spice College Lacrosse. You're watching the ACC on ESPN. From Syracuse, New York, for a battle between two of the top teams of the country, the fourth-ranked Orange welcoming in the undefeated number one North Carolina Tar Heels. Hi, everybody. Alongside Chi and Stanwood Birch, Jay Alter with you. Thank you so much for joining us today. What a great game we have for you. Two battle-tested, really talented teams. And this is probably the biggest test of the regular season. It is. They're both undefeated in the ACC. A top five matchup. This game is huge for ACC standings and all of April play. So much talent on the field today. Tough to pick one star to watch, but who has to set the tone today? It's going to start with the backstoppers for both teams. Taylor Marino for UNC has been phenomenal all season long, leading this number one Tar Heel team. In my opinion, she's the best goalie in the nation. She's a three-time All-American and just does so many great things, can come up with those almost impossible stops for her team. Nobody knows how good Taylor Marino is, like Kimber Hauer, the Syracuse goalkeeper, who spent three years under Marino at Chapel Hill, stepped out of her shadow and transferred to Syracuse, now making a name for herself. This is by far her biggest chance in her career against her old team today. She's going to see a lot of familiar faces out there. Number four goalie coming out of high school, had limited play time at UNC, has secured her job as a starter for Syracuse, and Coach Kayla Trainer says she's getting better every game. Big news for Syracuse this week. It's deja vu for the Orange. The injury bug has bitten again. News yesterday that Emma Tyrell has been ruled out for the season. She joins Emma Ward and Sierra Cockrell on the injured list. Just such a huge loss for Syracuse. Tyrell, third on the team in scoring, but then she had play around the rest of the field. She was phenomenal on the draw circle, winning possessions, comes up with cause turnovers, great in transition, connecting all the dots. But the good news is it looks like Megan Carney is going to be starting again. She's missed the last two games to an injury, and she's going to try to give it a go. There's Emma's older sister, Megan Tyrell. And yes, the Meg show returns to the dome. Megan Carney, who has missed the last two games, will be in the starting lineup to start this game. The two teams that were in the final four a year ago in the top four in the country right now. There's Jenny Levy, head coach of the first ranked North Carolina Tar Heels. 12-0 again after an undefeated regular season a year ago. And then Kayla Trainer in her first season as Syracuse head coach. I was joking with Gary Gate a couple of weeks ago. He thought he leaving the injury bug would be gone but unfortunately trainer dealing with something this program seemingly faces year in and year out last year just about this time is when Megan Carney tore her ACL for the orange but that did open up things a lot of people thought that the Syracuse was going to be out of the rankings really coming on not making it into the final four however different people stepped up we saw Emma Ward come really into play and Emma and Megan Tyrell really stepped up their game so they're gonna be looking for some new stars to take a lot of this heavyweight pressure off with the loss of Emma Tyrell. Yeah, Syracuse team with all those injuries a year ago still made it to the national championship game, so they'll look to do the same with another injury happening this week. Kate Mascheski in white and orange for Syracuse. For North Carolina, it's Ali Mastriani in the Tar Heel blue. draw as always is going to be huge for both these teams and we are underway in Syracuse a battle between two of the top teams of the country up to Ortega looking for a quick strike off the draw Syracuse recovers really well to stop what was an aggressive attack from North Carolina after the opening draw the crowd love that. North Carolina is so dangerous in transition. So excellent stop there for Syracuse. It's a Syracuse team that is 7-0 in the Dome this season. Undefeated 5-0 in ACC play. Obviously, their toughest test of the year is against this undefeated North Carolina team. What's the key for the Orange offensively? Well, really, with the whole of Emma Tyrell, who leads the team in assists, they're just going to need to have other people step up, but really everyone do their job, not step in not stand around and look for somebody to go to goal, really make clear lane, excellent shot there. Megan Tyrell opens the scoring. Her little sister going down with a season ending injury earlier this week in practice and Megan Tyrell sets the tone. Watch the opening here coming from Megan Tyrell, a little bit of a stutter step. She still shoots through traffic, but excellent. 
excellent finish with the lefty rocket. This is a, a great start, especially for Megan Tyrell. She was honored right before the game as part of the senior class for Syracuse. A lot of times it can take a while to get rid of those emo emotions, but a, a great fast start. You can see little sister Emma giving her a little standing ovation. That was the perfect start for Kayla Trainer's Syracuse team. A team that's faced so much adversity, not just this season losing multiple starters due to the injury, but last season as well. You almost feel like they play with that chip on their shoulder so well. I mean, it is so hard to deal with the injuries, and a lot of coaches will tell you, 24 hours we can be upset and feel sorry for ourselves, and that's for the team and the player being injured. But after that, we got to get back to work, and you've got to work on your recovery if you're the injured person and focus on that. And then the rest of the team, we just got to plug people in. Syracuse wins the draw. And here's Megan Carney, her first touch today, coming back after missing the last two games due to injury. It's great that she can give it a go, especially with the loss of Emma Tyrell, to have Carney back in the lineup. She did look like she was limping a little bit in warm-up, but she seems to be moving quite well right now. Tyrell matched up against Gabby Hall. Midway through the shot clock, Tyrell again. Trying to get that left hand free. Harris Chuck, very patient. 30 seconds to shoot. Here's Emily Harris Chuck, has a step deflected. Scooped up, and here comes North Carolina. Emily Knowles with a head of steam. Tar Heels so dangerous in transition. It looked like they had a little give and go almost for Emily Knowles. I love watching her play in transition. She does one of the best jobs of getting the ball on the defensive end, transitioning down the field. Always looks like she's a threat to score. She doesn't often take those shots, but really great from defense to offense. First settled possession for this Tar Heels team today. A North Carolina team that has so much talent. You'd think almost maybe too much talent because there's only one ball, but they make it look so easy. Elizabeth Hillman ties it at one, and North Carolina strikes right back. Just great patient play here. Jamie Ortega draws a double team and then just is able to hit a striking Elizabeth Hillman and takes that pass on the run. Great quick shot. This UNC offense is so unselfish. They do have so many people that can put the ball in the back of the net, but do an excellent job. They're number one in the nation in assists per game. I was just about to ask you before Hillman scored, with so much talent and only one ball, how, how do they manage to find this flow? I, it's incredible. You got to credit the coaching staff, just understanding that everyone's, all the different egos in there, the different playing time, having one ball, but you can see that they are so unselfish. They are, there is never a time that I can imagine from this year that somebody would say, so-and-so held the ball for too long. They forced it. They just move the ball so well, get in the right spaces, try to create other opportunities. And that's a, a very hard to do. Another draw for an infraction. They said that UNC went too early on that center draw. Four, four. Megan Tyrell's certainly been the quarterback today. Syracuse trying to answer him right back after the Elizabeth Hillman goal. A terrific lacrosse field Saturday continues on ESPNU. Two of the top teams in women's college lacrosse here at the Dome. Megan Tyrell, the lone goal scorer for Syracuse, almost had another. She and Stanwood Birch, Jay Alter with you. This has been a fun start. Two teams filled with talent, Sheehan, and Syracuse has been battling. 
great back and forth action and an uncharacteristic turnover for UNC. Syracuse is going to get fouled on the play. An orange team that lost Emma Tyrell earlier this week to a season ending injury. She joins Emma Ward and Sierra Cockrell. So three starters out for the year for the Syracuse team. Exact situation happened a year ago and the orange managed to get all the way to the national championship game. So they're down, but certainly not out on the injury front. And in the opening four minutes, they've proven that they can go toe to toe with the undefeated Tar Heels. And I think what happened last year when they lost Carney just about this time of the season, they realized that other players can step up. They still made it to the national championship game. So that gives them a lot of confidence that many people can step up into different roles. Great defensive effort there. Carney's shot just actually stopped by Brooklyn Walker Welsh defensively getting a stick in that shooting lane. Syracuse bench thought that was clean, but a foul called. It looked pretty good from over here, but they're calling a, a held check on their held cross. So Syracuse putting the pressure on the North Carolina ride, making it harder for them to get it into their offensive end. The Syracuse, at least from an energy standpoint, shot out of a cannon, playing with an edge, very aggressive in the ride through the first punch of this game. The defense and goalkeeper play of Kimber Howell Power will be huge in this game because this Tar Heels attack, nobody's managed to stop them this season. Power and Cage, the former Tar Heel, spent three years in Chapel Hill before transferring to Syracuse. Said she just wanted a chance. She's got a big one today. This UNC offense, when you look at them just as a whole, the seven players out there playing, they're constantly moving, keeping their defenders occupied. There's a foul off ball. Let's put Scotty Rose Grounding on the dot behind the cage. Here's Ortega. Ten seconds to shoot. Caitlin Wurzberger leads the ACC in assists. Curls around the cage. And a foul called with three seconds left on the shot clock. This will be an eight meter now for North Carolina. Jamie Ortega gets set up at the center hash mark. Great angle for her. So efficient in her shooting. Ortega one-on-one -on -one with Howard and beats her former teammate to fire North Carolina in front. Jamie Ortega already owns the career scoring points record at UNC. Adds another one to the tally. Explodes so well and she's a little deceptive. She goes quickly off the eight meter arc and then she brings her stick back but hesitates for just a half a second and then releases the shot to get it past Howard. broken the UNC record. Now she's chasing the ACC and NCAA record, 419 career points. Well, she has rewritten the record book in her time at Chapel Hill. And for Howard, the talk early, you know, going against your former team, certainly her biggest test since becoming the starter here at Syracuse. And, you never want to face this North Carolina team. There's just so much talent on offense, but when you know the players so well from being a former teammate, the psyche that goes into the game. And to play the goalkeeper position, you need to have a tough mental psyche and to understand that they're going to score goals, that it's going to happen. The number one team in the nation, but just to focus on the next save, great pick up here for Sarah Cooper and Syracuse. So Syracuse, the, the draw control was a, a point of emphasis for them. They've done an excellent job so far. And they've won three in a row. Now can they convert possession into goals? You saw Megan Tyrell score on the first possession.
setting up a lot of isolation plays for Syracuse. Here's Harris Chuck into attack mode. And an errant pass. North Carolina looks settled in defensively. Just not the right look there for the pass. I like how they're clearing out of the shooting lanes, allowing the offensive players to go one-on-one -on -one and then dish off when the slide comes, look for the pass there. But that was just too easy for the defense to come up with. zone defense is in a man defense right now they've switched in and out of zone and man defenses this year trying to find their identity beautiful spin and a charge and that charge call is a huge win for the Syracuse defense look at the turnover numbers UNC with three If you've been on lax Twitter in the last couple of weeks, the charge debate has been raging ever since that Loyola Syracuse game. And Syracuse comes up with a big charge there. They need something on the offensive end. Eight minute scoring drought for the Orange. Harris Chuck trying the end it, and she does. Emily Harris Chuck delivers, ties it at two. The 1v1 takes have been working for Syracuse, creating space and driving hard. And number 51 in white is one of the best at going to cage with a mission. And she delivers. We're tied up. It's 2-2. Spice College Lacrosse is brought to you by Old Spice. Smell ready for anything and the Walt Disney World Resort 50th Anniversary Celebration. North Carolina head coach Jenny Levy, Team USA's head coach since 2018. You see Kayla Trainer, Syracuse's head coach, a player for Jenny Levy for the World Lacrosse Championship this coming summer. And you look at the roster, it is filled with Syracuse and North Carolina talent. So many current stars right there on the roster and then the former stars, but a lot of names coming from Syracuse and UNC's career leader list. Just uh, so much talent. UNC USA is the favorite coming into the summer. Jenny Levy told us in our meeting this week that coaching Kayla Trainer since 2018, she knew she was going to be a great head coach one day. And she has certainly proven to be in her first season with Syracuse. 10 and 2 overall record, 7 and 0 here at home and undefeated in ACC play. They are dominating the draw four straight in a row for the Qs. And that's what the Orange needed. You can't lose the possession battle with this North Carolina team with how talented they are offensively. The only way you're going to beat them is you have more possessions, more opportunities. And the draw has been a strength for UNC this year. So they have been winning well over 50% the entire season. So credit Syracuse for winning the 50-50 balls, getting a couple infractions. Sam Swart with space. Great defense forcing Harris Chuck to the outside. Swart again. Thirty seconds to shoot. Here's Harris Chuck. Risky pass inside. No call. Double team. And now a whistle does come in. Great ball control by Savannah Schweitzer to keep the possession alive. Tried to squeeze it into Megan Tyrell. Bouncer read well by Marino. 
Every time Syracuse has tried to feed the ball inside, it's either been an errant pass or the defense just collapses. Like you're taught, when you get a pass inside as a, as a defender, you want to swarm to the ball, get stick on stick. So UNC collapsing on those feeds. I think when Syracuse has had the most openings is when they've cleared out and gone one-on-one. -on -one. And my Tyrell also, who is out, leads the team in assists, had 20 on the season. So she was a huge connector for this Syracuse team, especially she and her sister, Megan, working together. Jamie Ortega, number three in Tar Heel Blue. And the ball is in her stick. You've got to be all eyes on Ortega. Has it here. Has a step, passes it off. Here's Wurzberger. Leads the ACC in assists. Somehow, North Carolina, a scoop it score. Looked like Syracuse had batted that ball down, and instead the Tar Heels take a 3-2 lead. Chaos in front of the net, and it leads to a North Carolina goal. Looks like it's Aldave. We've seen her do that a couple times this year. Andy Aldave puts herself in the right position and is always looking for loose balls. Look at her just completely read that. She comes from off the screen, gets the ball or stick, and finishes. As a defender, it is so crazy when the ball goes up. You're trying to stop the person with the ball. You see it go either down on the turf or up in the air. You just need to swarm to it, bat it out, get it out in front of the cage. But Aldave, the transfer from Notre Dame, has been a huge welcome addition to this Tar Heel team. Great shooting percentage. So much talent on the field between these two teams. Five different goal scorers in this first quarter. It's very rare that all seven offensive players can make you pay, but that is true in this game with these two teams. So much depth. I mean, it's no surprise. There were some of the top teams in the nation and year after year get great recruiting classes. Both Jenny Levy and Kayla Trainer have often been talked about to say their ability to develop players. A big reason why Boston College beat this North Carolina team in the semifinal, then went on to win the national championship, was Kayla Trainer on that Eagle staff. Now trying to bring the same magic here to Syracuse. This is by far the toughest test of the year for the Orange. Number one team in the country, 12-0. Tyrell and the Orange battling, muscling their way in. Tied at three. Megan Tyrell has two in this first quarter. This is just sheer effort and will with Megan Tyrell going to cage against Emma Trenchard. She is constantly just battling in, forcing her way into the center of the field. You can see how fired up she is. She took over as a leader for this team last year and it has continued in that role, leading the team in points. Jenny Levy not happy about something. Emma Tyrell fired up her older sister with two goals. And you said it against Emma Trenchard. And for those that don't know, that's a three-time All-American preseason defensive player of the year <laughs> that you're going against. And you rarely see her kind of battling somebody outside the eight meter. She's normally able to keep them outside totally. And I think the conversation likely happening between Jenny Levy and the officials there is about, was that a charge? She was forcing her way in it, depending on how you look at it. it is, as we talked about, a very tough call in the sport. If you want to know what a back and forth first quarter this has been, that was the first draw control that resulted in a goal on the same possession. Goals have been hard to come by, two veteran teams battling, just going punch for punch in this first quarter. And the big question was with the injury to Emma Tyrell, would the Orange be up for it? And Syracuse has responded 
just like they did a year ago. An opportunity to take the lead on this possession. Here's Maddie Baxter. Off to Harris Chuck. Norm's going to take their time on this possession. Bouncer just wide. That's Natalie Smith, the sophomore out of St. Anthony's. This is where Tyrell has been dangerous. You see all the rumor teammates giving her. Passes out of the double team. The extra pass into Baxter. And she, and that's where Syracuse has struggled, trying to squeeze it into too tight of a window. Yeah, they have not been able to connect passing in the inside. Sometimes you're looking to get fouled inside. Well, excellent back check. Fantastic job, Maddie Baxter. One minute left in what's been an exciting first quarter between two of the top teams of the country, both undefeated in ACC play. Flip to Mastriani, spinning her way in, it scores! Allie Mastriani fires North Carolina in front, 4-3. Mastriani, ACC Midfielder of the Year last year. What a roll dodge here. Nice switch of the hands. Get, sees that sliver of space of the net. You can see Kimber Howard moving her feet there in cage, trying to get position. And when Mastriana, Mastriani shoots towards the backside there, she's able to get that one in. You look at the numbers, she's had to overcome injuries in her career as well. Horrible hamstring injury that she's battled back from, but she's been a phenomenal player for this UNC team. You look at the North Carolina shooting, four shots, four shots on goal, all on goal. It's crazy. Syracuse has outshot North Carolina this first quarter, nine to four, and yet it's the Tar Heels that lead. Efficiency, right? Four shots, four goals, where Syracuse has only converted three of their nine. So UNC changing up the draw. Ella Little, Ella Little now taking it. Syracuse has had the edge there, so now trying to get to the circle players, but another big win for the orange on the circle. They've got numbers if they want to attack. Instead, pulled out by Jenny Markey. Dominating the draw, seven to one in this first quarter, but they don't have the lead. Tyrell's got two of the oranges, three. Going against Trencher. No angle, somehow it went in! What a goal! First quarter hat trick for Megan Tyrell, and she is fired up. Megan Tyrell playing some inspired lacrosse on senior day. Again, takes her matchup, switches to her right hand, and I love these shots. This no angle shot. What you do is with your right hand, you take your defender, you create a little bit of separation. She bounces a little bit off. She's able to take her right handed stick in front of her body and make that a much increase her angle with that score. And you see the excitement there. She will battle to get to her left hand, but you can see she can score with her right hand as well. Such a dangerous score in her eighth game, scoring more than three goals this season. Yesterday, it was announced that Megan's little sister, Emma, would be out for the season, her partner in crime. You know, she's got so many goals this season. Well, Emma has assisted a lot of those, and now forced to miss the remainder of the season, and she has come out of this first quarter, shot out of a cannon. You see the emotion. Three of the Orange's four goals, and they are tied with the top team in the country, North Carolina. Just get the feeling, Sheehan. Buckle up. This is going to be a fun game from start to finish between these two teams. Couldn't have asked for a better start with this first quarter back and forth. Just unbelievable action. And Syracuse not letting any excuses come their way. Here's Mastriani with the roll dodge and score. Back and forth. We've got a top ACC matchup.
Great pass and an even better finish. Home to Ortega. And the ward curls around the cage. The freshman denied as Taylor Moreno makes her third save of the day. Ortega looking for her hat trick and gets it. A dynasty continues in Chapel Hill. It's five in a row. What a battle that was. Last season in the ACC Championship, North Carolina beating Syracuse 9-4. to The Orange, they've already got four goals in this first quarter. They are up to the test against, again, a North Carolina team that seems favorite to repeat again for a sixth year in a row as ACC champions. I mean, that is the thought, but there is so much talent in the ACC. Both these teams undefeated. ACC tournament looks a little bit different this year. All the first round action through the semifinals happens at Notre Dame. That is the site that is hosting, but then the championship game goes the highest seed. So this is huge in terms of who potentially will be the highest seed and have host that championship game the first weekend in May. That's a great point, Shea. North Carolina obviously in the driver's seat because they beat Boston College, but if they were to beat Syracuse today, that would probably give them any sort of tiebreaker and that's a big deal. The yeah. travel, I mean, these teams have to travel so much. To have a home game is a huge advantage. But it is likely, we were talking to both these coaches, we said this is probably the, the first of quite a few times you guys might see each other this season, whether it's in the ACCs and then potentially in the NCAAs. So they get to be quite familiar. And that ACC championship game was an abnormally low scoring game. Instead, high scoring today in the Dome. Four goals apiece to start this second quarter. I think the story is the orange at the draw. Eight to two against North Carolina, dominating at the circle. A position and a place where North Carolina usually gets the better of their opponent. Great defense for UNC. not sending the slides early defensively, letting that one-on-one -on -one matchup come. Here's Harris Chuck going down the left alley, tried to bounce it, didn't get a clean look, reloaded. That was a good opportunity, but was as wide. Jenny Markey couldn't connect. Eight seconds to shoot. Going low, backed up by Syracuse. They're gonna have to go really quickly here. Shot clock down to two and expires. Smart call right there just to drop the ball. If you're new to women's across, there is a shot clock. And even when you have two seconds, it's not like basketball where you just want to get the shot off necessarily. If you don't have a good look at Cage, you want to throw that ball in the corner or drop it where you are. So then the defense has to come back and get the ball and they have a longer way to go to their, their end of the field. You know, the Tar Heels offense gets all the accolades and for good reason, so much talent on this side of the field, but and with Syracuse getting the better of North Carolina to draw, how about the Tar Heels defense today? They've been really locked in to limit Syracuse's scoring opportunities. Collapsing in the inside, they've really negated that entire pass inside the eight meter. Carolina's taken that away, and their offense does get a lot of focus and for good reason, but their defense is one of the top in the nation. Just so solid, great fundamentals. Nice two-person two game behind the cage. Scotty Rose Brownie. Nothing there, so goes to Ortega. Great feed inside, everything but the finish. <laughs> 20 seconds left to shoot. North Carolina reloads with Ortega. Charges in. Tried to squeeze it through, Aldave's there. Goes down, no call, now a whistle does come in. Officials reaching in the pocket for a yellow card for a check across the face. So it looks like Sam Swartz running off the field. Two penalties, so one against Jenny Markey and one against Sam Swartz. 
Or no, just one? I think it's just one. Okay. Sam Sword was running off the field. Watch this check by 55, Jenny Markey. Hard to see if it made contact, but a reckless swinging of the check. And that could just be that first check right there. So you yeah. have to have control of your stick. So Markey will be sidelined for up to two minutes. Really delayed whistle there, though. Well, and I think when Aldave went down holding her head, that was a signal to the officials. They are... You <laughs> wonder if she doesn't do that, do they just keep play on? And North Carolina cashes in on the woman up opportunity. Scotty Rose Growney makes Jenny Markey in the orange pay. That'll release the penalty, but Carolina so good on the extra woman opportunities. They move the ball quickly, even when they're both at even strength with both teams. But when they're a player up, they find those seams and openings. Scotty Rose Growney catches that under pressure. She's got such great reach, 5'9", uses every inch of her wingspan. She can catch pretty much every ball inside, great control. See another mix up at the center draw. Kate Mischewski for Syracuse has been so strong. You got Olivia Dirks now. The Penn State transfer, who's been another phenomenal player. The transfer portal has been very good to UNC. Yep. Good call by the officials. The ball needs to go above the shoulders of both players. And that's been one of the issues. So they, one of the rule changes this year was instead of doing a redraw, which is what would have happened last year, and they had a whole nother setup, the, the officials say, who didn't do, what, who did something wrong? And then it gets a change of possession. And if they can't tell who did something wrong, it goes to alternate possession. Look at the numbers there. Syracuse, nine to two for UNC. And UNC's already trying to make adjustments, trying to put different players in there, but they've not found a solution. Maddie Baxter weaving her way through traffic. The crafty Canadian in her sophomore year with the Emma Tyrell injury. Look out for the redhead number 49 to step into the spotlight a little more. Here's Megan Carney, missed the last two games due to injury. Trying to gut it out with the number one team in the nation here in the Dome. Excellent defense, Brooklyn Walker Welsh for UNC. Carney trying to find some explosiveness. Great backup. Always important to have somebody behind the cage to run out the shots. They're playing through the pain today. 22 gets the feed here. Syracuse there to back it up. How do you think she looks? She looks really good. When I, when I saw her come out of the locker room, it looked to be like she was limping a little bit. Maybe that was a little bit of gamesmanship, but she seems to be moving quite well. She's gotten some good shots off. Tied at five. Natalie Smith with five seconds left on the shot clock. Syracuse answers right back. Been impressed with Matt Smith. Great two-way player. Look at the room here. I mean, Syracuse creative space has been phenomenal. And somehow Matt Smith is able to just keep the stick in her right hand and get the shot off. She's being forced to the outside. Great defense, forcing her to the outside. And then a little twist of her stick head releases that shot. Deceptive and gets it by Taylor Marino. And you can see just all the excitement on the sidelines. Not much scoring happening from Nat Smith, but one of those players that Coach Kayla Trainer talked about, but those are the type of players that are gonna to need to step up their production in the absence of Emma Tyrell. You know, I, I know after what we saw last season from this Syracuse program battling through all the injuries, you can't be surprised, and yet here we are, you know, second quarter, Kayla Trainer's team holding strong against this 12-0 North Carolina team. Does it surprise you a little bit? I mean, it's amazing. But I think the Syracuse team, we saw Emma Tyrell, she was smiling on the field, walking out with her sister on senior day. And she's seen other players go through this and do this and have to be that coach on the field. 
but it is amazing. But how can you not get up to the, for this game? I think maybe the best thing is having UNC come to town in the dome. And there, an uncharacteristic turnover for UNC. So Syracuse just dominating some of these extra possessions, starting with the draw. Well, watch out, UNC in hot pursuit. Syracuse slows it down. A team that has been known, certainly under Gary Gate, to push in transition as much as possible. Do you feel like the Orange are slowing the game down at all, knowing maybe they don't have the depth that North Carolina does? They may just want to make sure they take care of the ball in terms of pushing transition. UNC will often get in the hole and make it very hard for you to get them with uneven numbers. And the isolation, which is what we've been seeing all day long, they overload one side, a player attacks. What a score. That time it's Kearney. Marino might have got a piece of it, but not enough to keep Meg Kearney off the score sheet. It's Syracuse takes a lead, 6-5. Back-to-back goals. The Orange are feeling it. They are getting those extra possessions, and Kearney goes hard. Opposite corner, rips it with speed. And you can see Marino, it almost looks like it had a little curveball action yeah. with the release of her stick. And she is fired up, missed the last two games, sat out, a welcome addition back. You, know, you see that she's still playing with that knee brace after the injury that sidelined her for the season a year ago. The injury that has caused her to miss the last two games is still something with that left leg. But boy, I, I would say she looks as close to 100% as you could be after that last goal. And fired up. I mean, just mm -hmm. it, she also one of the seniors that walked out here being honored on senior day. And you see Syracuse first lead since 12-15 in the first quarter. You know, it's funny, Kayla Trainer. First year head coach of the Syracuse team told us that there's still two more home games that the Orange play this season, and yet the girls wanted senior day against North Carolina here at the Dome. And boy, they have used all that emotion in a positive manner because they are playing some terrific lacrosse in this first half. I think my biggest surprise from this game early on is just Syracuse dominance of the draw but also causing UNC to have some turnovers they're using all that senior day energy in yeah. a really positive way sometimes you see senior days and they're disasters for team but early on in this game Syracuse channeling all the energy almost another goal inches away from Megan Tyrell She's got a hat trick already in this first half. 31st of her career, ninth of the season. Harris Chuck denied by Marino. North Carolina will look to try and get Marino going. And Emily Harris Chuck, one of those shooters, it's very tough for a goalie to read. She's got different release points. So that was an excellent stop for Marino and a great transition downfield. Brooklyn Walker Welsh with the transition. Look at the shot disparity. 20 shots for Syracuse. North Carolina only has six. I, they should be possible? they should be really down in this game, and yet they've scored on five of the six. Five shots on goal, five goals. They're lucky they've been so efficient today, or else Syracuse would be well in front of this UNC team. I'm going to change my take. The biggest surprise is the shot differential. That is insane numbers right there. You know, Jenny Levy's time at North Carolina, 27 years. I don't know if her team has ever been outshot three times the amount. Olivia Dirk's an opportunity here to tie it at six. Kimber Howard still looking for her first save of the game. Gets one there. And that's an important one. No saves on the day for her, but as you said, somehow limiting UNC in their shots and looks on cage. Good defensive pressure. And it forces the turnover. Syracuse gives it right back to the Tar Heels. 
And that's what UNC is going to need to do. They're going to need to come up with ways that they can get extra possessions. Come up with the turnovers, really fight hard on the ride. Take care of the ball. It's just a position that North Carolina hasn't played in all season, which is one, trailing, but two, not being the aggressor. Usually they're the one that are so dominant in possession. And a lot of that starts with not winning the draw controls. Syracuse winning 10 to UNC's three, so they just haven't been able to have that make it take it offense. Ortega. And another errant pass. This is unlike North Carolina. Yeah, those uncontested passes right there. Jenny Levy's got to be frustrated. And sometimes that's just a matter of just taking it in. Playing in the dome can be a bit unnerving. I remember playing here. It's completely different. Unless you win here, no one likes to play here. It is mm. inside. The crowd is loud. There's a lot of colors. It just feels different behind the cage. It can get you a little bit disoriented. A lot of video boards. It's a, it's a great place to have a home field advantage, but it's taking a while for UNC to get settled in. They see, do seem a bit rattled. Usually so fundamentally sound, they never beat themselves at five turnovers in this first half. They've taken less than half the amount of shots Syracuse has in this first half. And yet the orange lead is only one. Little hidden ball trick, but UNC doesn't bite on that. Tyrell weaving her way in. Foul call. Good patience for UNC. They do send the slide. They're going to get called for the check. So Megan Tyrell gets set up on the eight meter. Your position to the hash mark closest to where the foul occurred. The offending player goes four meters behind. This is a great angle for the lefty, Tyrell. Already with three goals to her name today. Marino makes the stop that time. Here comes North Carolina. Emily Knowles with a burst of speed. Tar Heels have numbers. Can they convert? Great recovery from Syracuse to force North Carolina into a settled situation. I'd like to see Wurzberger behind the cage. She leads the team in assists, but see her take her one-on-one -on -one matchup. Look for the shot first, and then resort to the pass. Geiersbach, beautiful pass. The finish is there, and we're all tied up at six. This starts on the defensive end. Taylor Marino makes a huge stop, a quick clear, and UNC gets to work. Geyer's back, who's known for that inside roll, gets it inside, and Brooklyn Newman with the score. It's all tied up. We welcome you back to Old Spice College Lacrosse. What a great game we've got. Here at Syracuse, New York, the fourth ranked Orange going punch for punch with the number one team in the country, North Carolina. She and the possessions have been few and far between, but the Tar Heels capitalized on their last one. This last goal, Sam Geiersbach, bottom left, has the ball. She's known for the inside roll, beating your defender, but look up top. Brooklyn Newman here is going to come streaking down. They're not going to go for the fake here. UNC, Geiersbach is going to roll to one direction, come the other. Watch the defender's head, the white shirts. They're all focused on Geiersbach, and Newman's able to slip by, get herself wide open. Look at you on the Telestrator on a Saturday afternoon. That was an important goal, huge yeah. goal for UNC. Having a tough time, they're limited in their scoring opportunities. And if you've watched Geiersbach, she's been phenomenal. Another transfer for this UNC team. And she's beaten a lot of players down there. It's so funny you say that because we've done a lot of North Carolina games this season. When she gets into that position, I'm thinking to myself, she's going to spin and score. Syracuse, obviously, they love watching tape. They knew the same exact thing. And what does she do? Passes it off for an easy goal. So tied at six between two of the top teams in the country, both undefeated in ACC play. Something's got to give. All tied at six. 
With three minutes and 29 seconds left in the second quarter, the draw has been all orange in this first half. 10-3 advantage in the circle. And now it's Andy Aldave who will try her luck against Kate Mischewski. Aldave was Notre Dame's career draw leader. So a position she's extremely familiar with. And they're just throwing out all the stops trying to come up with a way to win. There's one. Straight to Mastriani. Mastriani usually takes the draw, but she's great on the circle also coming up with the, those 50-50 balls. So big win. Huge goal for UNC to tie it. And a big possession here. Here's Dirks. Steps on the brakes. Hauer deflected it. It stays with North Carolina. Wurzberger's been quiet. She's got to take this matchup. She's got to beat. And she's gonna, they're going to call a foul for the cross check in the body on Wurzberger. When a player goes, the defensive player goes behind a Wurstberger, she's got great shifty feet behind the cage. I think she can get them on her back and continue to go to go. I think she needs to look and continue to go inside. She thought she had Aldavi, though, for the Aldave for the pass. Not a great angle to shoot. Look for her to pass. She does. That should have been a goal. Great look for Mastriani. Couldn't convert. Geyer's Bach. Here's Mastriani, 20 seconds to shoot. Wurzberger leads the ACC in assists. Finds Dirks, trying to get the hands free. So gonna call the foul, official had the, the yellow flag up there. Smart move for Dirks just to hold on to possession. Not a great angle on that hanging hash mark. Five seconds left on the shot clock. Charges in, tried to create an angle for herself. Shot clock violation. It'll be Syracuse ball. A minute and 50 seconds left in this second quarter. The Orange with a great opportunity to head into halftime with the lead. Syracuse has dominated the possession in this game, the shots in this game, but tied on the scoreboard. They'd love to nose in front right before halftime. About 10 seconds separating the shot clock from the second quarter clock here. What a goal! Weaving her way through the North Carolina defense Nat Smith her second goal of the afternoon and the orange in front seven six with a minute until halftime what a take by Nat Smith just such quick movement great job evading the stick checks and firing it in came into the season with just three goals and already has two to her name today in the second quarter we were able to pick up great work with the audio there just seeing Emma Tyrell there's Emma Ward there who's also been injured you can see them cheering her on supporting the teammates you can tell though not used to having a camera in her face she turned around whoa what's that doing there seven six Syracuse lead big reason why is they've been dominant at the draw but Aldave won the last one that she took in the circle and the Notre Dame transfer is back there to face off against Mischewski. 
Wins it to herself. Aldave two for two in the drop control circle. Mastriani with a head of steam. Swings it back. This could be another turnover for North Carolina. Well saved by Scotty Rose Brownie. Offsides on Syracuse now. North Carolina with a chance to tie it at seven. 30 seconds left in this first half. Jamie Ortega, that's what she does best. One of the best players in college lacrosse. Another goal, and it brings North Carolina tied at seven. No surprise when you're in need of a goal. Go to Jamie Ortega, taking a page out of Syracuse book, a little overload play, the isolation, a lefty laser, great switch to the hands, and then watch, she's going over to the left-hand side, she shoots back, top corner to the right-hand side, slips it by Power, and gets her second goal of the day. Kimber Howard, the former Tar Heel, only one save today. North Carolina scored seven against her. Still amazing the differential in shots. Syracuse with Syracuse with 22, UNC just being limited to 10. So amazing conversion rate. Seven of their 10 shots going in. Andy Aldave has come in at the draw control. And the Tar Heels have won three in a row with her taking the draw. A chance to take the lead at the end of this first half. Five seconds. Great pass. The goal not there. And we will go into halftime tied at seven. Couldn't ask for a better First half tied at four at the end of the first quarter, now tied at seven. Not much to separate these two amazing teams. This is what we dreamed of, the April lacrosse in the ACC, back and forth action. It's all tied up. Don't miss a minute. Uh, talk about a game that lived up to the hype in that first half. You couldn't ask for a more exciting, thrilling game between two talented teams tied at seven between North Carolina and Syracuse. Alongside she and Stanwick Birch, I'm Jay Alter. Can't even wait for the second half. I mean, if, if these two teams play like they did in the first half, I don't know how you're ever going to separate these two because it was just so close. Back and forth, just so many different areas. It really was very surprising, especially with Syracuse having the injuries to Emma Tyrell, yeah. their third leading scorer coming into this, but very exciting game and it's delivered. You know, Megan Tyrell really set the tone in that first quarter. She was creating offense. The one-on-one -on -one takes here. She's against Emma Trencher, one of the best defenders in the nation, working hard. Syracuse did a great job creating those pass to goal, and I love this shot from Tyrell, getting that stick across her body for the finish. And Jamie Ortega is leading the way once again for UNC when they needed a goal, she was able to deliver the career points leader for North Carolina. One of the key factors in this game has been the possession at the draw control. And Caitlin Leshesky, number eight in white, is winning it to themselves. Syracuse had the edge all in the first half, which allowed them to have so many more offensive opportunities. It's funny, you look at the stats, and you might think Syracuse would have the lead particularly with shots on goals and forcing more turnovers for North Carolina, but the Tar Heels really efficient, even though they had less possession. They were extremely efficient, did a great job when they had those chances, but shots overall, Syracuse with 22 and North Carolina with just 11. This UNC team is averaging close to 36 shots mm. per game, so well below their season average. And only one save for Kimber Howard in cage for Syracuse, the former Tar Heel. Now facing a team she's so familiar with, spending three years in Chapel Hill. Now we said in the first half there was really not much to separate these two teams, but I'll give you the impossible question. 
what is going to separate these two teams in the second half? Well, I think really when you look at how effective UNC has been on offense, if UNC can get more possessions, they're going to be able to build that lead. So it's going to come down to whoever gets more of the ball. Since Andy Aldave, the Notre Dame transfers come into the draw control circle, North Carolina is three for three. So even though Syracuse dominated 10-6 in the first half, Tar Heels won the last three, but the Orange with the opening draw were back underway in the second half. Sarah Cooper for Syracuse has been a leader on defense. Their anchor back there, but is great on the circle getting those possessions. Coach Kayla Trainer talking about which is what a fighter she is, how much she wants to win. Neither team has led by more than one goal. It has been back and forth the entire game. Not much to separate these two. You know, we said it at the top. Two teams that are filled with veteran, battle-tested players. Tons of talent on both sides. You could argue these are the two most talented teams, top to bottom. I'm sure Charlotte North and Boston College would have something to say about that. So they have come out and proved it today. Great opportunity for Syracuse, and Olivia Adamson cashes in. What a start to this third quarter for the Orange. Mixing up things for Syracuse. Getting a great assisting play. Tyrell with the ball in her stick. You think she's going to cage, but a beautiful usage of the pick. And Olivia Addison, Adamson, the freshman, who Coach Kayla Trainer told us before the game that she was going to step in to take some of the load off with the Emma Tyrell loss, gets her 11th goal this season. You know, it's funny, we asked Kayla Trainer who her coaching <laughs> inspiration is, and she said her father, Mark, who's a basketball coach, at this guy, in a high school in New York. That was a basketball play. You know, curl around the screens, come in, get the ball and score. And it's funny, she said there's a lot of parallels between basketball and lacrosse, and her and her dad love drawing up plays. I feel like that one came from the trainer playbook right there. It was a great mix-up. You come out, you have the halftime break, where I'm sure the UNC is talking about the isolation plays, the one-on-one -on -one overloads, and you set up a nice stack and pick, and Adamson's completely wide open. Cooper again. She has been so dominant in the circle play today. On senior day, the senior Sarah Cooper, anchor of this defense, but so good in the draw game as well. Probably hung on to it a little too long there. Here comes Ortega and the Tar Heels. See a shooting space violation. Loved how UNC just with the ride and pressure there. The double team gets the check, transitions downfield. Emily Knowles, number one on the eight meter. Great save. The follow is perfect. Good goal for North Carolina. The officials say count it. Emily Knowles denied, but then followed her shot in perfect position for the rebound to tie it at eight. This is a huge goal for UNC. Emily Knowles, the defender, comes in. Good kick save. The follow up on that shot evades that crease area. Watch her footing. Stays completely outside of it. Emily Knowles, her first goal on the season. You see Syracuse not happy with it. In that replay, though, it did not look like she got into the crease area at all. Your stick can go over in the crease. Your feet and body parts need to stay outside. First goal of the season. Every time she has a ball on her stick, we talked about her ability in transition to run upfield. I want her to score and go to goal. She does this. We'll take a second look at this. Watch the feet in that blue line. She's outside of it. Yep. She's outside of it. So good call by the officials. That's a good goal. And love it that Knowles won. She didn't have to take that shot on the eight meter. She could have held off, but a defender scoring just does something for momentum. Aldave took a big hit after she won the draw to herself. A yellow card comes out. So the yellow card comes out. Aldave's getting up, and hopefully she's okay, but 
to blow the whistle there. Yeah, North Carolina would have had a clear shot on goal. Let's get the call. Yeah, and I, you hear Jenny Levy saying that should be a red card. Honestly, if you're going to blow the play dead, watch the extension of the arms here and up high. So th that's a brutal hit right there. And if you're going to blow the play dead, I, I agree, then make it a red card. But that stopped a, a clear scoring play for UNC and a very dangerous check. So yellow card is two minutes. It's releasable. A red card, you'd be ejected from the game, and it's two minutes not releasable. North Carolina already with a woman up goal today. Wurzberger eyeing up her options. Shooting space violation will give Ali Mastriani an opportunity on the eight meter. You saw how Mastriani, when she got the ball in her stick, she looked to Cage and she faked like she wanted to shoot. And that's key in terms of getting those shooting space calls. Have to have the opportunity to shoot. North Carolina decides to swing it around the perimeter. A patient approach on this woman up opportunity. Wurzberger has Scotty Rose grounding and finds her. North Carolina converts on the woman up again and takes a 9-8 lead. Wurzberger, Caroline's feeder, leads the team in assists. And Scotty Rose Growney, one of the best, at just streaking through the middle. Look at the extension of arms. We said how she uses her all five, nine inches of her, gets her stick in a position, jumps, and a beautiful quick stick. The placement of the shot is on point and UNC regains a lead and back to even strength the penalties released not to put it all on Kimber Howard but would you think about a goalie change here because they have a very capable backup in Delaney Schweitzer they they battle through the early part of the season for that starting job and you know, Howard against her former team just not at her best today you know, just two saves for Howard, and I think you do as a coaching staff. It's a they wanted to have one goalie as a starter. Howard had gotten that position. You see Schweitzer there on the sideline, ready to go. It's difficult. Sometimes you do it because you need the defense to play better, so you need a spark. But I think it, it could be, might be a chance. They still kept the Carolina just to nine goals, though. Right. For two teams that have traded punches, it didn't feel like in the first half any team would be classified with having quote momentum feels like North Carolina is starting to get momentum for the first time today this game swinging in their direction a one goal lead neither team has led by more than one goal today North Carolina with a chance to do that on this possession Jamie Ortega, so dangerous with the ball in her stick, lost the footing, still got the pass off to Geiersbach. Ortega is amazing. Wurzberger curling around the cage. Nicole Humphrey, 20 seconds to shoot. Aldave's back out onto the field after taking a hard hit, which set up a North Carolina goal on the woman up. Another big hit. This could very well be a yellow card as well. It looked like that check did go into her face or caused her stick to go into her face. Kayla Trainer not happy with that call. I think it's a good call by the officials there. Should it be a yellow? It could have been. And if, if it caused her stick, let's take a closer look here. Yeah, that, that easily could have been a yellow, causing the stick to get, definitely is a foul, causing the stick to hit her own face. Ortega charges in, deflected. The shot clock 
does reset to 60 and North Carolina stays on possession. Scotty Rose Growney. Brooklyn Newman lost her footing somehow, still with it. That was impressive that she was able to hold on to possession. Ortega buries it. There was a whistle right before she shot. The officials are discussing this. Looks like they're going to count this goal. They're saying shooting space, I'm, and they did a stick check as well. Usually you'd only do that after a goal, right? Let's take a look at the replay and listen for the whistle. That feels pretty simultaneous it's to me. That, that goal should count. Yes. And it will. So North Carolina, their first two goal lead today. Kayla Trainer's team has fought so hard, but the Tar Heels nosing in front. They've got the momentum right now. And another hat trick in Jamie Ortega's storied career. We welcome you back to Old Spice College Lacrosse on a lacrosse field Saturday across ESPN's family of networks. What a game we've had at Syracuse. Two of the best teams in women's lacrosse going punch for punch, 10-8 right now. And Old Spice ready for anything. North Carolina has grabbed the lead in large part, she and they've got a lot of unconventional goals today. The field awareness, Aldave, and then watch here, Emily Knowles, the defender gets her first goal of the season. Beautiful quick stick passing play, but UNC making the most of their limited opportunities. Mastriani back to the draw control circle. North Carolina wins possession. What can Syracuse do to stop the Tar Heels surge right now? They've got three in a row and the momentum at their back. Well, the issue for UNC in that first half, even though they were able to go into the halftime tied, was they didn't have a lot of shots. They had limited shots, just 11 shots in that first half, and they weren't winning the draw control. And UNC's made some adjustments, so it comes with getting some stops. Just three saves for Syracuse right now. They kind of come up with a defensive turnover here or a goalie save. Mastriani. Now Ortega. Good flash, the double team, great defensive effort. Ortega, so patient, and then finally pounces. Four straight goals for North Carolina. This second half, UNC has come out inspired. Ortego comes from behind the cage. Her head is up. Look at the space she has and the ability that she just completely gets a step in front of her defender. There's got to be a slide there if you're Jamie Ortega coming around with her strong, strong hand. Syracuse got to be more aware of that and send the pressure. Four goals today for Jamie Ortega. Well, she's on pace to, when it's all said and done, hold the ACC at NCAA record for goals. She just never has a bad game. It's incredible. And she is constantly marked up on with such top defenders. The pressure's always on her. She gets fouled a ton, like all, all good players do. The pressure's on, you want to stop them, but just handles it with so much composure. And they've needed her to score some big time goals and she stepped up at the right time. One goal in the first quarter, one in the second, and two back-to-back -back goals now in the third. I mean, you were, if you were flipping through the dictionary to consistent, it's a picture of Jamie Ortega. 
And she is willing her Tar Heels team for a road win right now. Four straight goals for North Carolina in the last four minutes and change. Another foul in the drop control for Syracuse. Tar Heels have won seven of the last nine, and that's helped shift this game to Jenny Levy's side. Syracuse is desperate for a stop. North Carolina piling on the pressure. UNC just using their offense, just working the ball around. Score, seen them score in multiple ways off the eight meter, off the dodge, pass inside. Scotty Rose Drowney trying to get the hands free, feet in front, bounces, kept alive, and Syracuse comes away with it. Big stop for the Orange. Feels like the ball has not been down on Syracuse's no. end in a long time. UNC really dominating possessions in this second half. Feels like Syracuse needs a goal on this possession. Pull one back, get a foothold back in the game with North Carolina grabbing all the momentum in this third quarter. Even though the offense wants to get a goal and wants to get it quickly, they have to realize that their defense has been under pressure and it feels like repeated attacks from UNC. So they need to just take a moment. They're doing a good job of playing with some composure and patience right now as, as they get into start really into their scoring play. Seven minute scoring drought for Syracuse. That's the goal they needed. Olivia Adamson, her second of the day. And the freshman delivers to end that long scoring drought of this third quarter. Much needed goal. And again, look at the spacing. Great look from Tyrell into Adminson. She is wide open, gets the separation again. Once again, using that pick play on the side, gets herself wide open. Love the celebration. So when Tyrell has the ball down low, she is a threat to score. So all eyes on her and love the usage of the picks and screens. At halftime during Sound On, Tari said, this Syracuse team is spunky. I like that word for this group. I mean, all the adversity, and then North Carolina throws a huge punch in the third quarter at Syracuse responds there's a lot of lacrosse left and the orange may be down but they just showed on that last possession they're not out it's gonna be unc so in the first half we saw a couple of infractions of unc moving early this one goes against syracuse and they've got five straight draw control wins UNC rotated in quite a few draw takers, and that can sometimes disrupt the rhythm of the other team. When you throw different people in there, you're mashing up against different styles, different sticks in there. And even though they've got Mastriani back in there, she, she seems to have the edge in the second half. Syracuse defensively sticking with the man-to-man. -man. Big stop there. And it's Sarah Cooper again. How good has she been throughout her Orange career and delivering another masterclass defensive performance today? She's got great height out there, runs the field so well. With her straw controls, coming up with the ground balls, the communication.
It's Olivia Adamson, number one in white, who has scored the last two goals for Syracuse. seconds left to the shot clock. This is Maddie Baxter. And a foul called against North Carolina. There's Maggie Carney who started this game. Still obviously some knee trouble with that left leg. You see it iced up there on the bench. Her team still fighting though. Down four starters on the season. And yet with a free position to go down only one. Baxter didn't get it away cleanly. And they'll say North Carolina possession. Big stop. Love Town Reno just coming up. She wants the ball right now. She's got some speed too. <laughs> Such a great athlete. So much passion for this program. Sixth year player for this UNC Tar Heel team and, and has done an amazing job in net. It's funny, in the first half, you wouldn't have thought Megan Carney was injured unless you were told. Looked so good out there. And yet, you see her in the second half on the bench with an ice pack on her knee. Which is a big loss. You know, she had four shots, one goal in that first half. But you have to honor her as a player, so it makes it a much tougher job for the offense not have her in there. She missed the last two games, so great to see her back. The officials are going to discuss this. The far side official called a foul against Syracuse, but the near side official said, nope, Syracuse ball. And a big stop for Kimber Howard. Good pressure that UNC on the sideline. Great job by Maddie Baxter. Sometimes, somehow getting out of that pressure, getting to the center of the field. So big loss. If you're just joining the game, Emma Tyrell. Out for the season with a leg injury. She suffered in practice this week. And now Megan Carney is sidelined as well. And those two had 30% of the points of the Syracuse offense. So a big loss to not have them on the field. But somehow just a, a two-goal differential between them and the number one team in the nation, North Carolina. And this is already after the Orange lost Emma Ward and Sierra Cockrell. And yet they keep on fighting. The senior, Sam Swart, makes it a one-goal game. Swart gets her first goal of the game. She's got excellent speed. Usually a huge part of the transition, but again, gets to the inside of the field, a step on her defender. Excellent bounce shot. Beautiful job just getting her hands free. The midfielder from Coopersburg, Pennsylvania. How about the job Kayla Trainer has done in her first season? All the adversity with the injuries. You've got the number one team in the country in town, and she has drawn up a near perfect game plan today to keep her team in it. She has done a phenomenal job. We talked about her presence on the <laughs> assistant coaching staff at Boston College. Just phenomenal in their national championships run, especially last season coming up with the win. And so much high praise for Trainer. Unbelievable career here at Syracuse. Four-time, first-team All-American. And she's so happy to be back at her alma mm. mater.
And draw controls have been the story, and it's been a tale of two halves. Syracuse dominated the draw control circle in the first half, but it's North Carolina that has taken control of the draws in the second half. Officials getting everyone into posi posi position there, making sure they're at least two meters away. And the other thing they've ch changed UNC has gotten much better at the draw control in the second half. They've also upped a lot of their shots. Now 19 just compared to Syracuse's 25. Emily Harris Chuck will have an opportunity to tie this game at 11. Free position coming. Harris Chuck's had five shots in the day, just connected on one of those. One on one with Marino. Two of the best players in college lacrosse. Harris Chuck darts in. Marino, what a save! Save of the day for Taylor Marino to protect this one goal lead. Harris check, you never know if she's gonna wind up and let it rip. She opts to take it in there and an unbelievable stop. It's gonna stay with Syracuse for possession. Confused why? Taylor Marino seems to be confused as well. So watch the shot. I didn't see anything there. And it's not the foul wasn't on. Harris Chuck going to cage. They've got Jenny Markey, number 55, with the ball. <laughs> Looks like there's an issue. Possession clock, shot clock got reset to 90, which would happen if there's a yellow card foul. Sh should only be 60. It was, yeah, there was no yellow card issue, so let's see if there's a foul. Look right here. A little scuffle for the ball. Hard to see if there was a push there. Now back to 75 seconds, so where it was, where the whistle happened. Marky just must have gotten fouled on that play, so they're awarding her possession. Possession. Savannah Schweitzer. Two minutes left to this third quarter. The Orange looking to tie it at 11. We were tied at four at the end of the first quarter, tied at seven at the end of the second. Would only be appropriate to be tied at the end of the third. Adamson on the restart from behind the cage, curling around. Great pass, but the finish not there. Marino snuffs it out. Great stop there for Taylor Marino. Once again, UNC's got possession at the end of the quarter mark. Mm -hmm. Great feed in front. Aldave put too much on it. Wurzberger's been quiet today. Ortega with it now. Aldave settles it down. He hit the official and stayed in. Either way, it'd be Syracuse ball. <laughs> he didn't slow down for one second there. But no. <laughs> Now, eight turnovers for North Carolina. What a check 
Aldave with the transition. And Here's Wurzberger. 10 seconds at the end of this third quarter. And I thought that first cross check to the body could have easily been a yellow card. They are just going to get the foul. Watch the extension of the arms across into the body. Easily could have been a card. Wurzberger steps in, fires, and scores! Caitlin Wurzberger unleashes a flamethrower with less than a second left in the third quarter. What a way to get your first goal of the game. Unbelievable. She's been looking first to pass. Watch this one rip. The Woo. step, the fire, and hits a couple pipes in there to make that goal count. Unbelievable score. And you got to give credit to Andy Aldave coming up with a check in the midfield and firing her whole team up with Wurzberger. Just stepped in and let it rip. North Carolina now leads 12-10. It leads the ACC in assists, but that time showed she could shoot it too. Less than a second away until the fourth quarter will begin. That was a big goal for North Huge. Carolina to stay in control in the driver's seat of this game. And what a fun fourth quarter we've got coming your way on ESPNU. Two of the top teams of the country. North Carolina, 12-10 lead, headed to the fourth. Old Spice College Lacrosse is brought to you by Old Spice. Smell ready for anything. You're taking a look at senior day. This was pregame here at the Carrier Dome before a thrilling contest with number one, North Carolina. You never know who's a senior anymore with the <laughs> COVID rules of the red shirts, but you know, Syracuse, Kayla Trainer asked her four year seniors, when do you want to do it? Because we still got two more home games, but they won't be here at the Dome. And a lot of teams would shy away from a senior day against the number one undefeated team in the country. but. Not only do they want it on this day, they have stood tall. They have been terrific in this game, trailing by two goals, but they've played exceptionally well. Amazing. And I mean, that just shows why Syracuse is one of the top teams in the nation. They welcome this competition. They want to be back. They want to play the best. So why not have your senior day? You see one of the seniors there, Megan Tyrell, has had a great game. Three goals, two assists on the day. But the injuries, just I think being sidelined right now, Emma Tyrell out for the season. Third leading point scorer, led the team in assists. And Megan Carney being sidelined the second half with ice on her knee. It's hard to keep pace. Those two, two players that are such an integral part of the offense. But we've seen that Syracuse has had other players that have stepped up. Syracuse still with the edge and draw control wins. 13 to UNC 11, now make that 12. Mastriani back in the draw control circle, looking comfortable. And North Carolina, their task at this fourth quarter, protect a two-goal lead and escape Syracuse with their perfect undefeated season intact. The third quarter, UNC created a little bit of separation, tied for fourth. The first quarter, 7-7 seven, seven at the half. Great pass, Aldave lost the handle, but a foul called. Andy Aldave, I feel like she's been a magnet for fouls today. She's taken a couple of big hits in this game. That one not quite as big. She'll get a great opportunity to try and cash in on an eight meter opportunity. The Notre Dame transfer, Andy Aldave. What a shot! So much speed! Nothing Kimber Howard could 
to do. Andy Aldave makes it 13-10. What a rocket from the center hash mark. A step, a rip, and score. Not stick side, hip. This is where all the experts say is the hardest stop for a goalie to make. When you, <laughs> you can see on the <laughs> sideline the surprise there. But that hip area of a goalie, the goalie has to make the decision. Do you make the save? Do you take your stick and save it top side? Or do you go underneath to get it where you're the shaft your stick is basically like up in your armpit area and very tough picture perfect for Aldave who actually got to give credit for a lot of things not only did she have the cause turnover that set up the great Caitlin Wurstberger score she also was instrumental in getting the draw control wins back in UNC's favor somebody on lax Twitter needs to go on and make that bench reaction a gift <laughs> we could use that come late April and May towards the end of this season you know, I know every player, every coach will tell you, every game matters. The ones in February matter just as much as the one in April, but this game just feels like it means more than a regular, regular season game. And we've got another big game coming up here on ESPNU, North Carolina and Virginia on the men's side. Coach Jenny Levy's son, Ryan, is on the North Carolina team. That Virginia team's been so strong. Another great conference matchup. You know, this game does, there's a lot on the line. We, if you're new to joining, the ACC tournament's gonna be hosted by Notre Dame, but the championship is held the, the next weekend, and whoever's the highest seed gets to host that. So this, both these teams undefeated in the ACC, UNC with a win over BC, but this is very important in terms of seedings. In North Carolina, Looked like the best team in the country a year ago, an undefeated 20-0 regular season. Everybody thought they would raise the trophy come Memorial Day weekend. Boston College knocked them out in the semifinals. And now they just seem like they've got a point to prove this year, that they'll finish the job. They definitely don't like the feeling of losing from last year, and that's been clear from the coaching staff and the players. But I think it's important that they have games like they've had in this Syracuse game, which has been back and forth, where they struggle because they need to figure out ways to adjust it. And they've made some great adjustments in this second half. Figure out ways. Oh, what a save there. What Point a blank stop. range to deny Ortega. And now here comes Maddie Baxter flying up the field. Great stop. And then the transition downfield. But I think UNC's made the adjustment they needed to in the second half, getting more shots and looks on cage and coming up with the draw controls. And now Syracuse, they, need, they haven't had the ball much in the second half. seen it work for Syracuse offensively when they cleared out and gone on the one-on-one -on -one isolation plays when they've used the pe the pick picks in stacks trying to get people open here's Megan Tyrell a first quarter hat trick since then she's been kept in check by Emma Trenchard Foul called against Maddie Baxter for an illegal screen. You know, the Syracuse offense just seems out of their flow. In you know, the first half, they looked so good. And you have to wonder, Megan Carney comes out with that injured knee, and with her out of the game, they just don't look as effective, as smooth. I think you're totally right. Having Carney out there, a great leader. And then with the absence of Emma Tyrell, you can't say enough of how she made the offense work. I mean, she was the connector with leading the team in assists, and it's hard to replace that. Uh, certainly tough to replace it in just a one-day turnaround. The Syracuse will continue the work in the coming weeks in preparation for postseason play. The Orange called for a yellow card here. But it's going to take time to see how this team plays without Emma Tyrell. Ironically, it was Emma Tyrell who stepped up with all the injuries last year and established herself. Now, who can step up in her absence? So, 
a releasable yellow card. This is the Syracuse's third yellow card of the day to Katie Goodale. And watch the extension of the arms in the body in the front. And they, a lot of it, it, we've seen a lot of these cross checks. So I think the officials really just, you see her surprise there. You're not able to push or displace your opponent like that. So third yellow card, next yellow card for Syracuse will become an unreleasable two minute penalty. Mm. We've seen UNC be effective on these. They have to rein in the play. We've seen the way the officials are calling this game. It's time to adjust. UNC two for two on woman up opportunities today. Scotty Rose Ground, he scored both the goals, 15 in Tar Heel Blue. That's not going to count. So that is not a simultaneous whistle. That whistle did happen for the shot. Shooting space violation. Brooklyn Newman. With a chance to make it a four goal lead for North Carolina for the first time today, Newman pulls it out. Still more than a minute left on this woman up opportunity. Scramble for the ground ball. Syracuse would love to kill this penalty. They've got a chance to do it here. Great defensive effort. seen teams gain momentum from killing a woman up situation the Syracuse in desperate need for some momentum down by three goals maybe they can draw something from the defense coming up big we've seen teams score when they're a player down too they yep. just kind of lull the defense into sleep they make it look like they're gonna set and reset and then they go into attack mode does look like they're gonna let this penalty expire wait till they get full strength Have about 30 seconds at even strength on the shot clock. <laughs> 15 seconds, shot clock really winding down. And again, searches just don't look in rhythm, in flow like they were in the first half. Can they find something at the end of the shot clock? Yes, what a goal! Megan Tyrell delivers again. A heroic individual effort willing this Orange team back into the game. She is just so deceptive when she's got the ball in her stick. Sam Swart gets it behind to Megan Tyrell. Watch a little stutter step. She waits patiently and then slips to the inside for a beautiful shot, not much angle there, and somehow gets her stick in between the two defenders and lets it rip. That is a crazy goal. It looked... Just a little cat and mouse game, yeah. working with the defender, seeing where she feels, and that's so, when you're a great attacker, you know where the positioning of the hands are, where they are on their body, are they a little bit above you, behind you, Do can you beat them topside, go underneath. But love the finish there with the shot between the two defenders. Breaks a near 10 minute Syracuse scoring drought. The Orange back within two. If you're looking for Virginia, North Carolina men's lacrosse, that just started on ESPN News. We'll bring you out to that game once we're done here in the Dome. But a fun finish coming. Buckle up, enjoy. Two of the top teams in the country. And Syracuse back within two goals. It has been back and forth all afternoon long here in the Dome. If you're North Carolina, you look at that last possession and go, we could not have defended it any better. 
And Megan Tyrell, the speechless goal. How do you score that? And they need the ball in her stick more. A little, she was a little bit quiet. She's got four goals, two assists. Is she going to be able to save this? She does. Tracked it all the way down, inches away from a turnover. Instead, Syracuse can look to turn it into a goal. Heads up play there for Cooper, just understanding where the ball was and get it, putting it herself in a position to receive that. Here's Tyrell in attack mode. Confidence in her stick, trying to get the left hands free. Turns around to the right. Double team comes in. She lost the ball. And Brooklyn Walker Welsh digs it out. Huge cause turnover by the freshman. Beautifully executed triple team. Just a really great job putting on the pressure, coming up with the ground ball. And now with your North Carolina two-goal lead, 6.30 left, you're in no hurry here, right? Well, you, really, you want to keep attacking. So, yes, the time is on your side right now, but they understand how quickly Syracuse can score. So keep up. I think they've done a great job with their pressure on the ride. Keep up the pressure. And what another a great Trencher takeaway. lost the ball. Marino's all the way out of her cage. She's got to run 50 yards back. Syracuse saw that, tried to push it, and instead gives the ball back to North Carolina. Chaotic sequence. So you still need to be in attack mode if you're UNC, still looking to go to goal, but just being smart, realizing that Syracuse is going to be anxious. They need the ball back in their stick, so use their over-aggressiveness to your advantage. Feels like a missed opportunity for Syracuse. They get the turnover. Marino's at the 40-yard line, has to sprint all the way back, and can't cash in with a goal. Worse, they give it back to North Carolina. Tar Heels trying to add to this two-goal lead. A nice long possession here. Still looking to go to Cage, but keeping the ball safe and not forcing it. Geyer's back with 20 seconds on the shot clock. Five minutes left to this fourth quarter. Trying to squeeze it in there. Syracuse tries to resettle to stop North Carolina. Five seconds left to the shot clock. Scotty Rose Growney goes low. And that's a shot clock violation. Huge stop for this Orange defense. To get any possession right now that UNC doesn't score on is a big win for Syracuse. Sam Swart, she has a motor on her, can just run through the midfield. Great transition. You can see Megan Tyrell off ball, just signaling just to settle down right now. You have to imagine the ball's going to her though it should she's been the one that's originated these the offense she draws the attention of the defense and has great vision here's Tyrell four goals to her name today Lips it to Harris, Chuck. 30 seconds left on the shot clock. Harris, Chuck splits two defenders, fires a shot low and wide. And 10 seconds to work with at the end of this shot clock. The Orange desperate for a goal, and they get it. The whistle blew simultaneously. Count the goal for Syracuse. And just like that, we've got a one goal game between two of the top teams of the country. Syracuse is not going to give up. And once again, you said fast. I said Nat Smith. Look at her go. She goes to cage hard. And we've got a one goal game. UNC up 13-12.
What a finish we have between two of the top teams of the country, North Carolina, Syracuse, both undefeated in ACC play. That'll change here, the loser of this game. It looked like it was going to be Syracuse. They were down 13 to 10, but they have roared back with back-to-back -back goals. And no surprise, Megan Tyrell with that score. And the surprise star of the game for Syracuse, Nat Smith doubles her scoring output of the season. Three goals today. Her first career hat trick for the sophomore out of St. Anthony's. And how about North Carolina? Their last goal came with 14 minutes left of the fourth quarter. So they are nearing 11 minutes scoreless without a goal. It has allowed Syracuse to come back in this game. And it's all up for grabs, all to play for in the final three minutes of regulation. What a game. Can't ask for anything more. We've got a great crowd on hand. The officials trying to get the placement correct. The shafts and stick need to be parallel to that midfield line. What a fight. Excellent job by Elizabeth Hillman coming up with that possession. How aggressive do you want to be here if you're Syracuse defensively? You know, right now, thank God for the shot clock and women's lacrosse. <laughs> so you, you can't stall right now. So you you hope you, you can get another chance to score. But I think Syracuse, you do want to have pressure because UNC has been so effective on their offense. And look at Taylor Marino. She's been dying to come out of cage all game long. Last win dates back to 2017 for Syracuse against UNC. Jamie Ortega, four goals, one assist. Scotty Rose Browning with two. Aldave with two. Here's Hillman down the right alley, midway through the shot clock. Ortega, so patient. Four goals to her name today. Passes off. Mastriani trying to spin her way free. Tough feed somehow finds Wurzberger. She's open, has space. Ten seconds left on the shot clock. Ortega darts in and scores! Jamie Ortega, so clutch! Fires North Carolina in front by two. Ortega's been on fire, ends the scoring drought here. Love her, she gets this defender swinging and a missing. She goes with a couple of her pump fakes, she's able to freeze the defense, there's the first pump fake, they slow their feet, she keeps going, fires that one in. Can't draw that better up for UNC. Multiple different ways that they're trying to attack the cage, they were patient, they maintain possession, they utilize the whole possession clock. When North Carolina needs a goal, number three in Tar Heel Blue answers the bell every single time. All-American Tawaratan finalist last year, scoring in multiple different ways. She's been very aggressive tonight. Love the seeing this in her play, going to cage hard and scoring really goals, really timely ways. And a much needed score there to give them a little bit of breathing room. A minute and 36 seconds left. And we'll head back to the draw circle where North Carolina has done a better job. Syracuse still has the edge with 15 to North Carolina's 13. If you're looking for the North Carolina-Virginia men's lacrosse game, that's on ESPN News and the ESPN app. We will bring you there right after this game goes final on ESPNU. For North Carolina, a perfect season, 12-0. Boy, Syracuse has given everything they can handle, and yet the Tar Heels continue to find the goals at the crucial moments. UNC has been effective on their eight meter, shooting 50%. Three of six. Syracuse not been able, only had two chances, did not score on either one. 
And you look at the woman up opportunities as a, a change, a change in this game when North Carolina was up, they were able to convert on those plays. Now, first things first, if you're Syracuse, you need the draw here. Can't afford to give North Carolina another possession. But the beauty of lacrosse is if you can get the draw and score, get another draw, they're right in this game. And you can see the wide open net. Syracuse opting to just add another field player on the field. So letting the goal be open. And the idea there is go ahead, score. We need the ball back. We got to get the ball. So you see it a lot in hockey, not as much in lacrosse. But Kayla Trainer going empty net, no goalie. Kimber Hauer is on the sideline. Huge draw win. Mascheski dispossessed, a foul called. Or do they get a timeout? Looks like Syracuse timeout, able to get a timeout. So a great timeout call there. Mascheski with a beautiful win. They was in trouble on the sideline. So she's very thankful that Syracuse got the timeout. So Syracuse with a great opportunity. A minute 30 left, trailing by two with all the adversity, all the injuries they've faced this season and this week. Emma Tyrell sideline for the season now. I don't think there's a lot of people out there that expected Syracuse to go toe for toe with this dominant North Carolina team like they have today. But now that you're here, you want to win it. It, it's not enough to just play well. You want to go and grasp this opportunity. Let's listen in to the Kayla Trainer huddle. Rodeo ride. Yes. Rodeo ride. So you're in it that just get the ball, right? And if they're all out pressure, you go. But they're probably going to sag in. So right away, get that to Meg. And we're in it. You're just going to start with the ball in case there's a double. Okay? Just get that to Meg. We're in it. You guys need to occupy, occupy, occupy. Get up to net. Take your time and go. If you don't have it, like getting the ball behind, back up to Meg. Meg, you're going. You come to the inside, come to the outside. Just have composure. All we need is one goal. Don't think about anything big. We just got a lot of composure. We got to score here. Okay? It's so great to watch Kayla Trainer in her first year. You know, such a great player here for Syracuse. Actually, the last time SU beat a number one ranked team, Trainer had seven goals in the game as a player, a fearless competitor, and she's now bringing that as a coach. She has put her team in a position to try and just do the impossible. I love when we get to listen to the huddle, so thank you to our crew for giving us that insight into Kayla Trainer's mind, and it is a clear that they want Megan Tyrell to get the ball. They want her with the shot. They're going to start with Nat Smith up top with possession. But great, I loved how she said we just need one goal right now. That's all you need to focus on. Here's Nat Smith. Didn't have the angle. A little bit more than a minute left in regulation. Syracuse searching for two goals. Here's Megan Tyrell. Stutter step. What a save, Marino! Showing why she's an All-American. Beautiful stop of Marino and love the double team for UNC as well. We'll see what North Carolina opts to do, my guess, the whole possession, but Syracuse isn't going to give up. Battle. Tar Heels win it back. Desperation mode for Syracuse. Empty net. North Carolina trying to play keep away for the final 20 seconds. Two teams that came in undefeated in ACC play. The Orange undefeated here in the Dome. Shorthanded due to injuries, but gave North Carolina everything they could handle. But a battle-tested Tar Heels team emerges with the win. 14-12 thriller. Unbelievable effort and game. 
So much action. The battle of the undefeated teams in the ACC. North Carolina comes out on top and proves why they are number one. Tough loss for Kayla Trainer at Syracuse. We say so long. North Carolina the winner. Let's get you to UNC Virginia.